All right, guys, we're about to head to the boat, actually Wolfsburg. So the Tetra is leaving the Czech Republic for the first and last time, I believe. And starting a Tetra is not like starting a regular car. First, you have to open the front, as Tesla would say, the front trunk. And then right here, there are two batteries. There's actually two six volt. There's a six volt here and a six volt there. And what you do is you turn the batteries on. Now you could, of course, leave the batteries on the whole time, but with 45 year old wire in here potentially that can get fried. It's smarter to turn the batteries off and turn the current off of the car. Then you open, oh. open the, the hood, I guess, and uh, two carburetors. And here's where the fuel comes in. And it's good to prime the carburetors because the gas evaporates out of the carburetors. So we just prime them, pump the gas in. Like so, that looks good. Leave that open just in case we need to get at it. And get into the uh, car, get the key. Put the key in the ignition. Okay, that's not the ignition key. There's a bunch of keys, most of them are to the door. There's the ignition key, turn the ignition key. Pull out the choke. Give it a little gas. No, no, you're in gear. Take it out of gear, thank you. Out of gear, make sure the brake's on. There it goes, huh? Look at that, first time. Did we buy the right car or what? And now we're just gonna let it run and warm up a little bit. almost perfect. It's probably, um, what would you say, in the 70s, Tommy? Yeah, probably in the 70s. Yeah, with an air-cooled engine, it's always good to have cooler temperatures. Not too cold, but certainly cooler so that it doesn't overheat. And uh, not a cloud in the sky in the 70s. All is well. All is well. Let's hope we can say that when we get to uh, Bremerhaven. Now, while you probably may have never heard of Tatra, the brand that you may have known that's built right here in the Czech Republic, and actually Mladá Boleslava, where we're at, is this, the Škoda. Of course, this is the Škoda Felicia, and I have a story to tell you about this. When I was here after the Velvet Revolution, I almost bought this car. It was cheap, $2,000. I drove up in it, my wife saw me, and she almost fell over laughing because I looked like I was driving a bathtub. Now these cars, they're worth about 20,000 euros. Should have bought it back in the 90s. But since we're here at the Škoda Museum, let's take a look at the other brand that the Czech Republic builds. So just a little brief history of Škoda. It actually started the way many car companies started and that is with this, actually with that a bicycle. Two men right here in Mladá Boleslava, Lauren and Clement got together and decided that they were gonna manufacture bicycles. So first bike went to Paris, 
saw this bike, well, a version of this, with the engine on the front and decided they could do it better, stuck the engine in the middle. And that is really the beginning of the Škoda brand. It wasn't a car manufacturer, it was a bike manufacturer. It wasn't long before Lauren and Clement decided that the money was right here in cars. And in 1906, this was the very first car they built, the Type A. And eventually they went on to build the Type AB, the Type AC. It just kept going and going until, well, let me show you that in a sec. Eventually, Lauren and Clement ran out of money and they wanted to expand, so they partnered with this little bird. It's really not a bird, it's an arrow with feathers and it's the company called Škoda. Škoda at the time was building big things like trains and trucks and decided to get in the car business. And so that's how Lauren and Clement became Škoda and this little bird was born. The rest, as you know, is history. Alright, so I am in the secret Škoda lair, actually it's not, it's called the depository where they keep all their prototypes from the company's long history. To my left, well that's probably Škoda's only movie car, the Ferrat, maybe you'd say Ferret. This was a vampire car that was produced for a prototype but eventually turned into a movie car that sucked blood through your feet, I don't know. But the most interesting cars, in my opinion here, are probably these two. These are Škoda 120s, which actually was a rear wheel drive car, but they have the engines in the front, unlike the production cars, which had the engines in the back. And of course, perhaps if you're a huge Škoda fan, this is something that could have been, but wasn't. These two cars are prototype cars that the communist government spent a hundred million crowns developing when they were coming up with those cars. These should have been the Škoda 125s. Instead, they were thought to be too Western, too Italian. They were designed in Italy, so Škoda built those cars. This could have been, that was. I'll let you decide. This is a Škoda Fabia Super 2000, and it's a race car. If you fancy yourself a WRC racer like Sebastian Loeb, this car is very attainable. Seven million crowns or about $350,000 if you want to start your own race team. Of course, Škoda has a long racing history with this 1984 Škoda Type 745. At some point, Škoda won enough races that it was considered the Porsche of the East. For the longest time, Škoda built front engine cars and then under the communists, they decided that they were going to try something different, building the rear engine car. And this was a prototype of a car that my dad owned. In fact, my dad escaped out of the Czech Republic back in 1968 in the real version of this. This is the Škoda Mbačko, or MB, which by the way stands for Mlada Boleslava, where we're at. Now, if you're more into modern Škodas, here's the concept for the Škoda Yeti, which is probably one of my favorite Škodas. It is completely original and somewhat off-road worthy. And of course, here we have the concept for the Roomster. Now both of these concepts aren't running prototypes, they're just for show, but the one that is running and is drivable is right here, and that's a prototype for the Škoda Superb, which is a car that Škoda has built from the beginning, or at least virtually from the beginning of its existence. Bentley or 
Rolls Royce. These were not inexpensive cars. Of course, you couldn't buy them. They were given to government officials to use as part of a government agency, but $200,000 seems like a heck of a lot in today's money. But the more I drive it, the more value I see in this car, the more I'm becoming friends with them, especially on such a beautiful day and such a beautiful countryside. It just drives really nicely. So of course, the speedometer, which is uh, giving up the ghost a little bit. <laughs> Our first casualty. But there are worse things. So far, so good. We're uh, about five kilometers from the border between the Czech Republic and Germany. And I don't know what kind of paperwork these guys are going to see. I don't know if we're even going to be stopped by the border police. Maybe we'll just cruise on through. I'm a little apprehensive, of course. Just because crossing borders in Europe can be tricky sometimes. At least it was before the EU. Entire support team. We've got uh, the previous owner, Jesse Bushik, over there. He's coming with us. He's coming with us to make sure that we get the Tatra all the way to uh, Bremerhaven. I couldn't have gotten any luckier with uh, the people who own this Tatra before me. Uh, Jesse Bushek and his buddy over here are just really helping us out, and uh, very grateful for that. This entire Prague to Pebble Beach epic road trip has been made possible by you, everybody who donated, and of course, friends, family, and even strangers. Let me tell you about that. When I bought the Tatra, I bought it basically online in America through a website that sells veteran cars, which are classic cars in the Czech Republic. And the owner, Mr. Bushek, has been, well, nothing if not completely and utterly supportive of this entire trip. Imagine buying a car from somebody and then asking them, by the way, I have to drive this car 500 kilometers or more uh, to drop it off at the boat in Bremerhaven and I need some help with that. And the owner or previous owner of the car says, no problem, let me get my friend, let me get a boatload of tools, load them in my van, and we'll follow you all the way to Bremerhaven. And if something goes wrong with the Tetra, I'll help you fix it. And then imagine me saying to him, that's great, but I also need to ride back to Prague. And the previous owner of that car, if you were buying this car, saying to you, no problem, I'll give you a ride back. Well, that's exactly what Mr. Bushick did. He's been our chase vehicle the entire way from Prague all the way to Bremerhaven. I just can't tell you how touching that is because this entire project is being done on a shoestring. We're doing it thanks to the help of supporters like you, thanks to the help of friends and family, but thanks to the help of strangers who have time and time again come out of strange places and helped us get as far as we've gotten so far. So this is a huge thank you to everybody who supported us, to all the emails, to all of the well-wishers, and especially to you guys for watching. A little bit less 
less loud, but still it's pretty loud in here. We're gonna go downhill. Let's see how fast you'll do.
we would come in with like a Ford Granada. What do you say, Grenada? And we were the king of the road, except for the Tatra. The Tatra always had a lot of power. And when we were on these little two-lane roads, my dad would pass the Trabant and be all upset. He'd pass the Hartburg, the Jigwilis, the Moskovichus, all these Eastern European cars. And then, of course, there'd be a Tatra. And you could never pass the Tatra because this car had plenty of power. I'm here in Wolfsburg, Germany, and now you may not know of this town, but it is a home of Volkswagen. It is the Motorstadt, and we're here to check out the factory and check out the Volkswagen Museum. And the fine folks at the Ritz-Carlton and, of course, at Volkswagen have enabled us to do that. I'm hearing noises, I'm feeling vibrations, and I'm like, come on, Tatra, you can make it, you can make it. 